I put out an effort, it's never going to work. There's, there's no way of, of, of knowing whether you're a boy or girl, because nobody tells you. You don't wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boy today. You know, you know. It, it's, it's, it's in you. You know, it, it's in your genetics. It's in your brain. You, you, nobody has to tell you who you are. When Brenda was 14, after years of unhappiness, her parents revealed her true sex at birth. Within a few months, Brenda had decided to become David. It's coming, it's a coming. For the last 10 years, he has been married and living in Winnipeg with his wife and her three children. He has undergone surgery to have his penis reconstructed. Make sure the car won't move. Unaware of the significance his case had had to science, David had never realized how important it might be to go public. By me not saying anything, uh, the medical community was under the impression that my case was a success story. And I was shocked when I heard that people thought that my case was a success story. In 1998, John Money, now in semi-retirement, published 10 reasons why Brenda's case might have failed. These included the possibility that the surgical reassignment at 22 months had been performed late, that having an identical twin brother could have heightened Brenda's sense of being abnormal and that the trauma caused to the parents by the entire event would have adversely affected Brenda's development. These were problems that Dr. Money had never emphasized before. But for many people, it was much simpler. The gender reassignment of a perfectly normal boy hadn't worked. Many of us were completely in the dark about, you know, what had happened. We'd heard in the early 70s what a success this had been. Until this denouma, we had really no, no knowledge of how the twins were doing. And so this led to major disaffection. And what was disappointing in all of this, I mean, and, and, and more than disappointing, I mean, what, was, what hurt a lot of us is that there had been no word that this wasn't working out the way it had been first suggested. We'd been let down uh, by somebody who we respected. With the most dramatic case of gender reassignment a failure, controversy has also arisen in the field of intersex. Some patients and doctors had begun to question gender assignment surgery for intersex cases even before David went public. I would recommend to the parents that surgery has great risks um, uh, for children with intersex of being the wrong surgery and that the children may well uh, um, reject that surgery at a later time in life because they may choose the gender identity that was not assigned. But many surgeons and psychologists believe David's case has no bearing on intersex I'm not done yet. because he was born a normal boy unlike intersex children who receive an imbalance of hormones in the womb and their brains may well reflect this. For many who have to deal with the complex problems of intersex, the wider body of John Money's work is still highly valued and he remains respected in the field. Indeed, while the guidelines for treating intersex have evolved continuously since the 1960s, they have not altered as a result of David's case. Many experienced surgeons continue to believe that intersex children do genuinely benefit from gender assignment surgery. We have to perform our surgical task with what we believe to be the best interest of that child at heart. And that is what we do. And we would not undertake surgical intervention if we were not convinced completely that this was the correct course of action. The fact is, 
that neither the case for or against assignment surgery for intersex is proven. There simply is not enough evidence. Over the last 40 years, because of the sensitivity and complexity in tracking patients, there have not been sufficient long-term follow-up studies to fully judge the outcome of gender assignment surgery for intersex. Many doctors who continue to have contact with their patients say most are happy in their assigned gender. But it will continue to be difficult to gain independent evidence of this. The, the scientific data that we would love to have to tell us whether the, the decisions we're making in infancy were correct or not, uh, this data does not exist. Um, therefore, in this field, medicine has to remain a mixture of science and art. Whatever it means for intersex, David's case has also caused the medical community to re-examine another belief. The theory that we are all born neutral is now being questioned by many. In the 21st century, we can say that the theory of gender neutrality was wrong. That there are important biological factors that play a role. What the mixture is between environmental and biological factors uh, is going to take us a long time to sort out. I was never happy as Brenda. Never. And I'd slip my throat before I go back to that. I'd never go back to that. It didn't work because that's life. Because you're human. And you're not stupid. And eventually, you wind up being who you are. Next week, Horizon re-examines the controversial theories of Graham Hancock, whose popular ideas about a mysterious lost civilization challenged mainstream archaeologists. Main Street.